I am Satesh Chaudhary and I'll be your host for this morning. Today, we have an extremely exciting event lined up for you. We are honored to have with us one of the topmost and one of the most respected leaders with the Volunteers for a Better India organization, Bala Saheb Darade of Sodes in real time fame, who will be addressing us in only a few moments. So for most of us, Bala Saheb needs no introduction. But for the benefit of those who are new to the organization, let me take a couple minutes to give you a brief background. Um, also, this Google Hangout will go on for about an hour. I'll take just a few minutes to give you a brief background on the Overseas Volunteers for a Better India and on Bala Sahib. Then Bala Sahib will be presenting for about 20 minutes, and then you will have the opportunity to ask questions. You may type your questions in the comments field for the Google Hangout. You know, and one of our panelists will pick up these questions and ask Bala Sahib these questions on your behalf. Over on to an introduction to the Overseas Volunteer for a Better India. Now, not a single day goes by without us hearing about some negative news uh, from India. Be it corruption, scams, issues with women's safety or farmer suicides. About 30% of MLAs have serious criminal charges against them. Another report mentioned that in the past few years, the number of violent crimes against women has increased by 100%. Take a moment to reflect. Who is responsible for this? Einstein once said, you know, the world is becoming a dangerous place, not because of a handful of people who do wrong, but because of the vast majority of people who of good people who do nothing about it. And recognizing this, the Volunteer for a Better India movement was launched in India in February 2013 in New Delhi. Right? Launch event was attended by over 100,000 people. And within the span of three months, we have over 1,000 active projects running across India. You know, medical camps have been organized in over 108 slums in Delhi. Over 20 villages served in Broadhead, Maharashtra, bringing irrigation and drinking water to over 100,000 people. The Overseas Volunteer for a Better India organization was set up to support these initiatives in India. And Bala Sahib is one of our pillars of this organization, who has mobilized and inspired thousands of youth all across India. Bala Sahib. Uh, Darade was an entrepreneur and a nanotechnologist here in the US and returned back to his village in Maharashtra and ran an initiative for three years to save the farmers from the Maharashtra droughts. His integrity, effort, and contributions won him a landslide victory in the local elections over incumbent political candidates with no bribes and no underhand dealings. So, Bala Sahib was also a member of the extended core team uh, for India Against Corruption and work very closely with Anna Hazare, who was the director of Shankara Rural Transformation Project, featured in India Today as one of the romantics in the article They Have a Dream and covered by several top newspapers, a recipient of Maharashtra Chalal Award, recipient of numerous other awards as a youth icon. You know, uh, Bala Sahib also has a stellar technical background. You know, he has a certificate of contribution from NASA for the Mars Exploration Rover Mission, you know, awarded the best paper award in international conference on systematics, cybernetics, and informatics. Also awarded Lunar Ratna for his contribution and development of the Lunar Crater in 2006. So Bala, right now, you know, we have several hundred NRIs who have gathered here today to hear from you. Many of them are your ex-colleagues who have seen you being so successful in your profession and now are eagerly waiting to hear from you as a national social reformer. Many people are also from the India Against Corruption movement who have either worked with you or have heard about your work. You know? uh, many also, many other fans you've collected because of your previous interactions with radio channels like NRI Samaya and from Facebook. Your work has been well covered uh, in several NRI media and has been a hot topic of conversation in NRI circles. So Bala, you know, thank you so much for being here with us today and uh, we're really honored to have you. The floor is all yours. 
we look forward to your presentation. Go uh, ahead, Bob. Thank you very much, Satesh. Thank you very much, Satesh, for such a nice introduction. And first of all, warm welcome to all of you, all of the, my ex colleagues um, or master students who are working there, doing job there, uh, ex IAC colleagues, uh, NRI community who is looking forward to do something for their uh, home country. Um, I feel very happy. This is a special uh, event for me today uh, to present in front of you because I I had that connection. We have we share both the connections, same connections here. Um, let me just give some a little talk, little more. Um, I belong to a very small uh, village in India. I studied under tree initially uh, for few of my initial years. Then I did my engineering in India, masters in US, uh, like many of you. Uh, but there was always that feeling for the nation that I want to do something for my parents, for my hometown, for my society, for my nation. That I believe, I know that everyone who are attending the session, they have it. Um, everything was good there. Um, I like uh, I like all my um, stay in US. Uh, you all, some of my colleagues, made my life very nice there. But there was something, and then one of the movement which triggered it was like the revolution in Egypt, anti-corruption movement happening in India. And every year I used to visit India. I used to go into the villages, uh, my hometown, and see the situation. Uh, two things I observed that. There is so much youth power, more than 70% population in India is under 35 and 65% of the population in India still lives in the villages. So then I, I had this idea like why don't use this huge youth population by empowering youth for the rural development and this idea of Shankara rural transformation came up. Uh, so in 2011, April, uh, I decided I formed this concept of Shankara Rural Transformation and in August, September 2011, I decided to move back to India. The concept of Shankara Rural Transformation is uh, basically using youth in, using empowering youth and creating a sustainable model villages, sustainable model communities to bring more and more smiles to the desert ones in the remote villages. What I observed when I traveled in India that there are a lot of problems. What I observed that uh, people who are going through problem they know the best solutions. They might not have resources, uh, leadership skills that time but the people who are going through problem they have the best solutions. What they needed is that hope, vision, leadership and direction. And then we came up with the parameters that uh, for ideal community, health, hygiene, education, income generation, social just. Uh, it was like my observation few years back and it's still, uh, still those things are there. So in Shankara Gram Parivartan, Shankara Rural Transformation, in, it consisted three uh, major things. One is these parameters uh, for ideal community health, hygiene, education, income generation, uh, agriculture, energy, environment, public domain. Uh, central theme was leadership. The people who are going through problem, they know the best solutions, but, but what they don't have is that hope, vision. So uh, through youth leadership training programs in villages, we started creating leaders. People who are going through problem, they should take charge, they should take the responsibility. And over the period of few months, we have successfully done that. Third thing was creating a collaborative platform between NGOs, governments, individuals uh, who want to share the resources, expertise, skills to bring that hope, change and smile. So this was a concept of Shankara Gram Parivartan, the time when I came back to India. That time there was uh, India against corruption, the movement against corruption in India. I was part of that movement also. It was a good learning experience for me, um, close to media, close to so many political leaders, so many people in the country involved. Um, when I see now, it was a good learning experience for me to see how, how our country is working. Then I realized uh, we need social workers, but with that also we need also a political revolution. Uh, like uh, I always define politics is, 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 uh, is a part of, is doing the same thing 
um, what I decided, rural development, youth empowerment, it's just a medium. Uh, but in India, it has a long lasting impact on policies to bring a permanent change. I thought that that, that is a good medium. And uh, eventually I entered into a panchayat elections uh, without using any money power, muscle power, caste factor. Uh, we could win within a very short time uh, with a high with a huge measure, with a huge margin over established parties. That shows that democracy is still alive. Hope is there. If in Vidarbha, in a remote Buldana district, uh, in the remote constituency where literacy rate is very low, uh, still people uh, do care for their future. What we need is that hope change. Um, if you see like Obama won two elections on these two keywords, change and hope. And I think in India also, uh, we need uh, we need to show this to people that change is possible. Um, current scenario, like as as Satej also mentioned, and we all know through news and different things um, that a lot of things are not going very well in the country, but uh, solutions are there. Solutions are within us. Um, so that's how I started. And um, when I came to uh, initially, I studied uh, various problems, uh, various. Uh, in various groups uh, in India. Uh, I focus my work particularly on Vidarbha. Uh, if you, uh, you might heard about farmer suicide. Uh, there are like every half an hour, according to a recent report from New York State University, every half an hour there is a, a farmer suicide happening in India somewhere. And uh, Vidarbha is, is the central region, um, the most number of tens of thousands of suicide happened in last decade. Um, so, uh, I decided to work from Vidarbha and Buldana was one of the remote districts. So like to give you an example, like sometime in let's say in the night, uh, 4 a.m. in the night, I get a phone call and I go to a village uh, and I see the hanging body. So many a times that it's like a, a regular situation now and then when I go there, um, uh, there is a whole like family member surrounding. Uh, many a times we are the one who take that body down. So uh, there, it is a complex problem um, as we go along the discussion, I will explain. But uh, farmer suicide uh, is one of the major problem. Uh, corruption, we are seeing like a lot of issues uh, right now, naxalism or a lot of this kind of issues or even now security related issues are also uh, getting the result of the uh, corruption broadly happening. So like uh, when I started, eventually we started uh, interacting with them uh, as, as we got more understanding about the issues. Uh, and I realized that uh, awareness, uh, government policies, uh, there are two things like one is uh, we need to uh, legislative uh, we need to work on two things like one is legislative and another is awareness um, in typical in Vidarbha like economical uh, economics if you see uh, there is no strong economy no no strong industries there uh, leadership is one aspect that there are issues but nobody is keen to uh, discuss or take a lead in uh, take a lead in solving those issues. Uh, with the farmers, a lot of things like uh, uh, right from the getting seeds, um, input costs are getting more and more through a lot of uh, uh, now uh, there, there is like a lot of monopoly of the companies and they, they don't have a good market. So their input costs are increasing and middleman middleman usually they are taking up the most most of the profits uh, and then they take a loan and there is this vicious cycle that they can't come out. So uh, this was one major issue. Uh, recently uh, you are seeing this uh, water drought situation in Maharashtra, uh, particularly in Maratwada and Vidarbha uh, due to less rainfall and majorly I would say more than a natural disaster, it is a somewhat man-made disaster also because of lack of water management, uh, lack of water budgeting. Um, 
we all understand the importance of budgeting and planning and micro planning how we um, do in us in india to that with same thing with agriculture also uh, crop management crop rotation um, that is uh, not much happening here and for that largely uh, a lot of um, government policies um, also needs to be uh, reformed they 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 need to be reformed uh with this water dot issue uh, definitely there there was a less rainfall um, but uh, i think the main uh, thing is water budgeting um, we couldn't like uh, because in the in the region of maratwada also which is right now a drought hit area there is one village um, where uh, they did a water budgeting and now that whole village is green so uh, this issue of water dot um it is uh, it could be solved with the proper water budgeting and uh, irrigation uh, you might have heard about irrigation scam in maharashtra a uh, lot of irrigation policies are based on huge contracts it's huge money like 50000 crores 10000 crores there are huge dams and there, there are no rivers and there are rivers and there are no dams instead of that if we had a small check dams of 10 lakhs 50 lakhs um it would have served a lot of people and a um, lot of water could be conserved um so there is this uh, but right now situation in maratwada i and vidarbha is very uh, due to all these things it is right now very serious uh, famine like condition situation in many of the areas um, people are, people don't have a, uh, drinkable water uh, like there is no water for Uh, drinking water animals lot of animals cows they are dying because of uh, no water and fodder um so in in, in this scenario also, also but like uh, to give you an example um there are a lot of positive things happening uh, uh you might have heard about vijay pandre uh, the one who uh, who got out all irrigation scam there is a, his village named as lakhanwada it is a village of 15000 population Uh, there was no water uh, in our uh, surrounding villages so on one day we went and we discussed with farmers we discussed with uh, the citizens from that village uh, and just through people contribution we started doing a project uh, we took a river uh, widening and deepening of the river uh, we got the experts with us uh, within a few days um within next 2 3 days there was water and right now there is a whole uh, there is a water of water storage of 1 km uh problem solved for a lot of people now uh, surrounding villages also do have water so there are uh, we see these problems uh, seems to be complex but solutions are simple uh, it is uh, in india i don't see there is a lack of resources we have more than enough resources uh, in terms of natural resources talents human power um, everything what we don't have is the resource management uh, and for that uh, uh, to a great extent i see lot of government policies uh, uh, in in system they also they, there needs to be reforms the power of democracy lies in the awareness of people um, there is another side to it uh, like we have now gram sabhas happening in villages Uh, there is a lot of um, dis- decentralization happening lot of power is being uh, given to uh, gram sabhas uh, what is needed is awareness uh, uh, we need to create a lot of awareness we need to create leaders from village um, self respect uh, need to be like with that uh, with the self respect because that india was a prosperous all these techniques uh, now in many villages where i go uh i just show them example of their four fathers like for this water problem we used to have band bandisti um uh, binding lot of techniques which were like very old techniques and now through those techniques uh, we we have to revisit those techniques and through those techniques we can uh, come out of uh, this uh, problems uh, there is a huge there is so much population of youth now we have but uh, uh they need a direction uh, they need a goal and um, they need to take up a challenge for the problems the the in their community and uh, i see there a lot of uh, hope also have hope also there because a lot of youth uh, nowadays i am seeing working on a 
small small projects to uh, like volunteer for better india in india um, we have lots of stories uh, like uh, on day to day basis um, uh, i would like to share a story about a village madi um, which is one of the most uh, remote village in uh, vidarbha uh, so first time when i went there uh, uh, from like from lona where i stay the village was about uh, 25 kilometers away uh in a in a jungle in a forest uh, there, there is no uh, there, 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 there is no roads there was no water facilities uh, let me see if i can do screen share and show you the hello okay uh can, can you see my screen no we can't Okay, because I just thought it would be good to show some uh, pictures or videos of the. Um, we can, can see. You, yeah, yeah. We were able to see your screen just now. So now, can you see or? Yeah. Yes, we can see your screen now. It's it's gone again. It's gone again. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can see. Go ahead. I will just mute the sound because the project. Is so this is a typical uh, kind of tribal villages um uh, she is a lakshmi from a village um the first time speaking in front of camera um pe people explaining the problems uh this was our team of youth which worked for that village let me show you the okay so uh, this was a kind of village um this village doesn't have any road uh, there is no any way for uh, commuting uh, this is a kind of water they drink this is how kids play uh, so we we, we started uh, we first time when we went to the village uh, they started explaining about their problems uh, every year uh, during rainy season at least 3 4 uh, people who die because they can't reach to hospital uh, pregnant ladies do suffer from lot of pain and problems uh, because there was no road there was no water uh, none of the government officials had visited the village uh, and what we we went there we empowered the people uh, we trained them uh, eventually with the interaction uh, through people contribution Uh, we built a bridge also there uh, now there is a concrete road uh, initially no kids used to go to school so we went there uh, taught them and now this village is on the way of becoming one of the model village uh, in in uh, in vidarbha so this was a team of youth who worked for a village uh, so this vi video is mostly in marathi so i will just uh, carry forward about the farmer suicide kind of uh, what i was i was sharing you story um at at 4 am in the night i got a call and uh, this was the situation i see uh, but uh, what was most uh, what was more interesting uh, when i started interacting with the family uh, uh, the four year son of the farmer um i i started interacting with him and uh, he said my dad shouldn't have done this uh, then i asked him uh, what would you, what would you like to do now he said i want to go to school but then he asked me a question uh, that uh, will i be able to take education and will education help me solve such kind of problems um i immediately decided to adopt this kid and i know if like given a proper education given proper um, proper resources uh, he can be the change agent 
so we are sponsoring that kind of now we are we have started program where we are adapting uh, the kids of the farmers uh, who are suffering from farmer suicide uh, so a lot of uh, on day to day basis a lot of such stories are there um, so a uh, lot of uh, i see there are problems on on one end but um, through by doing small acts uh, by just we can create a lot of innovative solutions too um i have lots of stories to share but uh, today i would like to make it as a more interactive session um so if you don't mind i think we uh, it would be great uh, uh, to have more questions from you so that uh, i can address exactly what you are interested in thank you so much bala that was really inspiring uh you now while our other panelists are looking uh, collecting the questions now there's one question that we have uh, that has come up uh, uh the question is what can we do to feel more connected with rural india you no know, we being here we kind of get disconnected and so what can we do to feel more connected with rural india uh, uh short answer you can get involved in the projects with us um that is one thing uh, let us say uh, talk about madi so there is that school uh, there is there are no roads a uh, lot of schools are like that lot of uh, villages are like that so if we have a uh, projector and computer there maybe you can teach from there you can interact with the kids from there with nowadays with uh, like we have internet wherever there is a cell phone uh, because in india there is a cell phone penetration is very good Uh, so this is just like a small idea but there are a lot of a uh, lot of projects uh, in health uh, in education um, in uh, irrigation uh, in, in water solving the water problem uh, that uh, we have a jal jagruti abhiyan um, you can see that on overseas volunteer for better india website too um, i would i would highly recommend you uh, going to that website and visiting projects uh, you can be the part of the team there and then we have lots of uh, projects ideas in different uh, uh, in different like education health water eco tourism uh, creating small enterprises uh, for vidarbha particularly uh, for that that would be uh, really helpful uh, so just having that willingness to do something uh, it starts from there like because a few years back sitting in my office in cubicle i didn't know uh, what to do how to do but there was like just reason i want to do something i want to take that one step uh, be the change you want to see in the society and i took one step further and uh, it started flowing lot of projects initially i just started with a small event uh, while being on a vacation for a month and that uh, became a project now and now a lot of uh, youth are getting inspired they are starting their own projects uh, we have lots of now young leaders uh, who, uh, who who started doing project in their area so there are like uh really i don't see there is any limit it is just uh, you just have to take a first step uh, that willingness to do something um, be the part of the mission be the part of the change and uh, i see this today this uh, the platform through which we are interacting os is uh, oriented for better india this is one good platform for you all that's great bala um Well, another question that we have is, um, you know, these initiatives must require uh, the, these initiatives that you started uh, must require uh, huge amounts of money. How much funds are required for these initiatives? And can you just give a brief of what the major initiatives you are doing and how much it costs? Um, uh, definitely, means initiatives cost money. Um, first is willpower. Um, my, like my my money is there. Um, and it depends like jal jagruti abhiyan uh, till now with just a like very small amount of money we have reached about 1 lakh people uh, we could solve the problems of more than 1 lakh people in in like very small amount of money so uh, like jal jagruti abhiyan um, funding amount is about $50000 that would uh, solve a lot of 50000 to $100000 will solve problems for about uh, 50 lakh people and uh, that is one project uh let us say this project i was talking about school uh so if if uh, you can like uh, uh, collect or contribute laptops and projectors 
um, so in each school we can provide. So initially we have taken 22 schools right now. In the second phase, 100 schools we are going to take. Uh, so this is another project. Uh, so typically projects, uh, some projects are larger, uh, some projects are smaller, uh, 5K, uh, $5,000, some projects are $2,000. Uh, so I can share you uh, uh, through the website, we can share you uh, more about uh, projects and details and uh, what amount of funds is required and how they are being spent. So uh, you also have the exact key for that. Okay. So, uh, hi Bala, it means uh, there are other questions coming in and uh, truly, truly an inspiring uh, work that you are doing and like you are really a thought leader, uh, I would say and uh, a, a grassroots worker i think i think you are an inspiration to all of us the people who are listening so uh, one of the question that kind of is very similar uh, uh, you already answered one part of it like uh, there are so many farmers committing suicides uh, and it's not only vidarbha uh, your region but all over india in andhra pradesh in karnataka so it's it's a pan india uh, kind, of, uh, kind of a uh, issue right now so uh, basically, wh what are the challenges that a farmer is facing uh, and, and is resorting to committing suicide? Uh, can you just spend a means, couple of minutes on that? Yeah. Uh, first, I would say uh, hope. Uh, there is so much hopelessness uh, somehow. Like uh, I see that as a big problem because when does somebody commit suicide? When there is extreme hopelessness. Um, and uh, right. that is a product of system. Uh, that is not just one reason. It is a complex problem, and it has a complex uh, reasons also. But it is a product of a system. What we call like a, a political system or bureaucratic system, um, because the role of uh, politicians, administrator, uh, the politics, is resource management. That everybody gets uh, creating good policies, uh, planning, and with with regard to regarding farming, there are so many variables. Uh, if you see farming as a business, uh, every other businesses they have a set of rules. Uh, there are clear cut laws. Uh, there are less variables. Uh, in a farming business, there are so many variables. Um, farmer do pay tax on every side when they buy it, when they sell it, uh, everything. So they, um, uh, I mean, taxes by that. I mean, uh, they pay. Uh, when 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 they buy, they buy in uh, retail. When they sell, they sell in wholesale. Um, another thing, there is no b budgeting, uh, planning, uh, crop rotation. Uh, I would say uh, what crops to a lot of cash crops. If you see in Maharashtra, um, sugarcane and sugar sugarcane bed, uh, sugarcane consumes a lot of water. Uh, cash crops also do consume a lot of water, and. Uh, mm, uh, there is a there is not a proper uh, management uh, resource allocation. Uh, another things are the government packages. Um, a lot of uh, like there are uh, subsidies and packages, and that's where corruption starts. Uh, in the name of farmer suicide, uh, like I see in Vidarbha, last two packages, thousands of crores came in, um, but uh, nothing nothing reaches farmers. Um, it is just like a um, uh, in bureaucracy and political system that money like it, it goes away. Um, so farmer they don't have, they don't have com they are not confident now um, in Vidarbha. What I see, um, if you see the son of doctor, he wants to be, become doctor. Son of lawyer, he want to be lawyer. But farmer never wants his son to be a farmer. And when I was a kid. Um, uh, when I was a small kid, I used to see that there was a farming was a very respectable profession. Um, it's like a serving to the nation, serving to the country. But um, that, I don't see that uh, right now. So uh, right from policies, uh, corruption, uh, not proper planning, um, and resource allocation, I see these as a uh, major uh, problems for the farmers and the farmer suicide that every half an hour uh, you see that that is a level of hopelessness among the farmers they do right. hard work they work but they don't um, 
this is what they are getting. So we, we, uh, it is a high time uh, that we need to do something for this. We need to think about this. Right. Uh, means uh, I think uh, another related question that I got is, uh, as you mentioned, like there are a lot of people, the middlemen, that take the profits away, and and the pro the, the, the the farmers don't get the profits, like because they sell in wholesale, so there's less margin. I mean, the, they are buying the crop, the expensive crops in retail. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are you uh, particularly uh, working towards uh, removing the middlemen also in the process? Any initiatives there? You can, can you shed um, some light? Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, that's where, like, the role of technology, uh, we can have a like technology can play a role there. Um, see, uh, any like products we can like through Walmart or through any website. We can buy product directly, like eBay. Is there are a lot of websites. We can directly buy products um, uh, from like two end users can exchange the. Uh, but uh, for the farming, if we can do same thing, now we have a plan. Uh, we are proposing to government, and uh, locally we are trying to do it. Uh, so we are having a farmer information center in each uh, tehsil. Uh, what we do is uh, we take a survey. So let's say in the taluka there are. 100 villages. So we have a few volunteers, a few paid workers who will go to each village, um, make a note down uh, like what crop they are sowing. So let's say there is a crop which, which which comes after three months. So in our database, exactly after three months, that much of soybean will be there, that much of um, pulses, that much of cotton will be there. And then we link with the buyers. Um, so uh, this is one thing that we can remove um, uh, if we create a robust, good platform. Uh, we can remove the middleman. Uh, second thing is uh, agro processing. Um, if we have a agro processing units, SMEs, uh, agro based industries, um, uh, then farmers do get good returns, and uh, then the money flows in the same economy uh, because product is created like locally. Um, so uh, that is. Um, that is also another thing we can uh, uh, we can do actually, and uh, uh, we are trying here. Like in my region, there is a lot of soybean, a lot of cottons. Uh, so through cotton, we are uh, like uh, now through a small um, uh, self-help groups. We are creating sanitary napkins, which is again solving the problems like human empowerment. We are empowering uh, girls and to take up that projects. So creating small self-help groups. Um, so there is a whole chain. In our model village, uh, farmer is the center place. In Shankara Gram Parivartan or the projects, uh, first we think of, first we, first is roads, uh, creating farm farm roads, because some farms are remote. If uh, they do produce a lot of grains, but they can't, uh, uh, it doesn't reach to market because they don't have a, a roads. So first is farm roads, uh, then water management, um, irrigation schemes, uh, water conservation, uh, then agro processing, um, the creating market. So there is a whole cycle. There is a step by step process um, that uh, that uh, we are doing here. Thanks for sharing that, Thank Bala. You. Thanks, Bala. Yeah. Yeah, Bala. We have one more question uh, regarding your role with India Against Corruption. So uh, mm -hmm. you have been an extended core committee member of India Against Corruption, and you know you have worked closely with Anna Hazare and other decision makers in IAC. So, you know, being one of the youngest member and youth leader in IAC, so what was your role and, you know, contributions? If you can you know, talk a little bit about that and how, you know, uh, that ex experience, you know, helped you in your current initiatives. Um, I would say it was very, uh, uh, I took it as in like internship. Uh, it was very good learning experience for me. It was a huge moment. Uh, a lot of politicians, media, as I earlier said, a lot of people, whole country was looking after. And um, uh, my role as extended core committee was uh, mostly mobilizing youth, um, going into villages, uh, traveling, understanding the problem of people, pulse of the nation. Um, and then sometimes some uh, negotiations, uh, like uh, handling messaging and communication uh, within team. So. Uh, it gave me huge learning opportunity uh, interacting with the a uh, lot of leaders of the country uh, how our country runs uh, how like how things have been discussed 
uh, during tea time, what what happens in the meetings, how it comes in front of media, how media prints and how people uh, interpret and then how how again politicians or how again um, people they turn around. Uh, but I would say the movement uh, is, a, it is a, like a, it is a process and it is still there. So um, there are um, there are a few uh, very like success factors are now people are coming on streets and a lot of scams are coming there uh, from Delhi to be uh, like right from Delhi to small villages people are coming on streets um, also people in bureaucracy uh, like Vijay Pandre officials like Vijay Pandre uh, people in the system there are they also started speaking uh, also political parties also are now having some compulsion uh, it though like need is it is not like still there is a lot of need but political parties are also now um, they're being forced um, uh, to give a good uh, candidates um, or the good, good good face for the party at least um, so i would see it was a for me it was learning experience um, intentions in team were very good but somewhere i thought uh, lacked uh, leadership uh, and experience to handle such a huge uh, movement. Um, it was unexpected uh, kind of movements. The crowd we saw, the response, um, and um, but I see like now Anna, uh, like he he did his job. Now it is our turn, youngsters. Um, what how we how we take it further? And uh, yes, it did a lot of. Uh, it, it does help me. Um, there are very a uh, lot of many learnings also. They do help me. Um, first, understanding of people, understanding um, of the psychology, uh, that was very important outcome and it is helping me in my uh, even um, job as a ZP member. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, Bala, I have uh, one question and uh, this is related to the ongoing, uh, what uh, these days, like it's it's hot topic. Uh, uh, there is a there are marches and rallies uh, uh, against one company. It's called Monsanto, which is uh, known for its genetically modified crops. And uh, uh, I mean, all over the world, there will there were protest protests in twelve different countries. Uh, f sorry, uh, uh, protests in fifty two countries and four hundred thirty six cities. And in India as well, there were protests, and and I, I know I've read articles about farmer uh, farmers committing suicides all over India, in Punjab, in Andhra, and in, in Maharashtra. So, uh, can you talk a little bit about how you are contributing, and 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 I mean, first of all, uh, helping the farmers against uh, these genetically modified crops, and and. Are there any corrupt government policies which are pushing uh, these kind of companies and forcing them and forcing the farmers to buy buy the seeds from uh, from these kind of companies? Uh, yes, definitely, I agree with you. I mean, um, the problem uh, which is Montan's uh, Monsanto is uh, is creating, uh, like seeds are very important for the farmers. Um, so the seed of the problem is in the seed itself. Um, so one, uh, they, they, they try to control the patents or seeds, uh, try to bring the monopoly and uh, then once they get the monopoly then they can play their own rules. Um, so the, uh, that is the kind of way how they are working. Um, and definitely it, it, uh, is, is, uh, it, it contributed to farmer suicide because um, the, they use a lot of marketing techniques, huge marketing techniques that farmers will get more output. But eventually, when farmer uh, they pay more for the seed, uh, they don't get the output. Farmer would have taken loan for that, and then they will commit suicide. Uh, the solution I would say is a uh, uh, there is not a con concept of sustainable agriculture uh, right now. What I am seeing is there is a lack of sustainable concept of sustainable agriculture. Uh, that is the need of uh, of the time, uh, and uh, organic farming. What we are doing is we are promoting organic farming, um, which uh, we, which is the form of sustainable agriculture. Uh, 
by um, also like by, by promoting uh, organic farming uh, having organic products uh, also with the gm genetically modified foods uh, apart from for, like farmer issues uh, consumers also have a health a lot of health related issues um, so to answer your uh, question um, uh, organic farming is the solution and uh, we saw wherever there is more uh, in the villages we promoted organic farming uh, there is a more uh, happiness happiness index uh, growing uh, people living healthy lifestyle it takes few years it takes about 3 years uh, but we have like a concept of zero budget natural farming a cow can take care of 3 acres of land um, and because in lot of places lot of places where in western maharashtra they use lot of chemicals lot of uh, seeds genetically modified now uh, soil is being replaced um, they literally have to replace the uh, soil so uh, um, in, in terms of vidarbha i will come back to vidarbha again i mentioned you lot of problems about vidarbha but a um, lot of times when i discuss i strongly feel that vidarbha is going to be one of the most prosperous um, region Uh, it has a potential to do that because um, somehow, like um, uh, the land is fertile um, in Western Maharashtra or other parts, like where more cash crops, like in Punjab, has taken soil. Uh, soil is no more good. Um, so I see that uh, in, in, in uh, compared to other regions, Vidarbha uh, farmers from Vidarbha has that advent advantage that land holdings are more. um so it, it is contracted to a previous thing but yes uh, there is like a if you see there is a huge potential and that's what i want to do that's it's my dream to uh, convert vidarbha into a, a one of the economically vibrant where youth has that um, uh, confidence um there is a strong leadership within each village and uh, because if it can happen in vidarbha it can happen everywhere uh and uh, uh, we have we started from the toughest region in vidarbha um we have taken up villages now uh, through the uh, as i mentioned you through the earlier models uh, now farmer there is a lot of improvement in farmers we are we are using local seeds um now eventually after one two years their produce is increasing uh, and it can if it can happen in the remote part of vidarbha most uh, undeveloped part it can happen anywhere and i want you all to be the part of like uh, i want to share the dream with with you all and uh, together definitely we can bring a bring a change we can bring more and more smiles uh, to the farmers to the youth uh, to the to, uh, to the next generation okay thank you for sharing uh, the you know such a inspirational thought with us bala so bala we have one more question uh, from our viewers so So since you know you moved uh, back from US to India, you know, couple of years back, and then you have been very instrumental in bringing about a positive change in villages of Maharashtra. So you know what you have achieved is like you know even an experienced public leader will take pride in. So as you know earlier, Sadesh Sadesh mentioned, you know some of your uh, some of the awards you know uh, which you uh, got for your contribution as a young and dynamic social leader. You know, for like from being it from uh, you know. Uh, featuring getting featured in india today or getting maharashtra lal award from red fm and uh, so you know this clearly shows that you know thousands of youth across india you know and uh, a lot of us here in us are in so you, we see you as a true inspiration so today on this hangout since you know we are a lot of youth who are gathered together to you know see you live to get you know some inspiration from you so what is your message for youth uh my message to youth is this we definitely as i said the last sentence in my la uh, last question together we can bring the desired change uh be the change you want to see in the society uh and don't wait uh, like we don't have to wait um, for anything now this is a very good time um i see there is a only hope is from youth uh india youth is the future of the nation um like there so much so much youth in the country uh, and now when i see in the system also like uh, i was part of pm delegate i do work with lot of secretaries uh, sometime with ministers as i see upper in the ladder i don't see much hope uh, hope is at down in the villages in the youth uh, because uh, one of the definition of the youth uh, i heard it somewhere it was by some noble laureate that 
uh, youth is immature to know uh, youth is immature enough to uh, immature to know what is possible and impossible they always try impossible and make it happen make it possible make it happen possible again and again uh, that it is it's about energy um, we have a lot of energy uh, putting that energy in the right direction um, so uh, like be the change agent uh, don't wait uh, take that one step and uh, like you will see that uh, youth can do wonders because i have lots of examples lot of school kids now like and the schools keep going to tribal villages teaching there a lot of hope i see a um, lot of model villages the work i was telling um, there are so many leaders created now so yes we can uh, we can change and uh, change can in india the kranti revolution uh, once it starts it can really take take it so now our role is to be like krantikari uh, we don't have to i don't like see that in maharashtra there is example of shivaji maharaj or bhagat singh or like um, how many days we are going to use the same examples um, uh, today youth is waiting for role models so now like job of youth is to be the role model uh, take the responsibility see if things are happen- if it, if you don't like things happening around um, like take the responsibility be the change and um, it is uh i can say that it is very fulfilling uh, for me this my award is smile on the face like when i go to the madi or any tribal village and the smile of, smile on the face of the old lady or on the face of on on, on the smile on the face of the kid uh, that is award that is success um and it is really fulfilling uh, i would uh, i would like you all to uh, be the part of this mission That's really, that's really nice, Bala. So, Bala, we have some uh, some more uh, questions. Uh, when are you planning to come to the US uh, for some disaster? <laughs> uh, when usually when I give talks in India, I say that. Uh, so, people say that you all have to leave and come back. I have not left anything. I have taken everything and I am taking them to the US. I am taking them to the US. so it is mostly when i go in villages i say that and lot of people are coming so um, yeah but uh, to answer your question um, uh, still i am not sure but uh, i might plan in august sometime for few days because it will be rainy season here so uh, people, most of the farmers they will be busy if everything is streamlined um, and uh, like the only purpose to come there is uh, if if i can share my most stories there um and uh, hopefully that will uh, bring into like more projects um because i know a lot of you there you really want to do something uh, there is so much desire uh, when i speak um to uh, like uh, most of you uh so uh, only reason to come back will be to share that those stories with you um uh, yeah i would like to, i would love to come but when when my like now for me my constituency my people the people who elected me uh they are my first and foremost priority um so if if they allow me to come then i would definitely love to come probably in august sure bala we really look forward to uh, seeing you here and uh, you know i've spoken to several uh, several people with the overseas volunteers for better india and everybody is you know really keen to organize events in the cities for you to host you when you're here in the us so uh, hey. definitely look forward to that Satej in Bala, uh, hey Bala, uh, just wanted to ask hi, one hi. last question. Uh, first of all, thank you so very much for doing such an excellent job in India. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, everyone was saying earlier, you are making all of us proud, and uh, you are living a life for so many of us who are dreaming to uh, live one day, and you are actually experiencing all that. so kudos to you for doing what you have been able to do so far in la- such a short period of time and you know there are so many people on this hangout are asking one question again and again and one question that comes to everybody's mind is yes we would love to help we would definitely uh, like to contribute but if we would to contribute how can we do that there are ways where we can 
contribute remotely. Uh, we cannot come to India and we cannot join hands with you. We, we wish we could, but our limitations are we cannot. So our contribution comes probably in a monetary uh, uh, resources. So if you would like to contribute your programs and if you would like to fund your projects, how can we do that? Can you share a uh, couple of ideas regarding on that, please? Uh, definitely. And uh, in fact, I was going to ask you how, uh, means I wanted to ask this question, like how would like you want to contribute? Uh, but definitely for the projects, um, uh, like overseas, Volunteer for Better India is one platform. It's a good platform that uh, you all can go to the website. Uh, there are projects listed, and we can list more projects. Uh, right now, there are a few projects like Jal Jagruti Abhiyan. I mentioned you the example of Lakhanwada, uh, the village with 15,000 population. There was no water. And uh, within just a few days, the water problem got solved uh, for the surrounding four or five villages. Uh, like that, we have lots of stories regarding, um, like a lot of different stories. So, uh, Jal Jagruti Abhiyan is there. Uh, you can definitely um, uh, go and donate. Um, other things, as I mentioned, for the education project, um, contributing uh, laptops and projectors or like used laptops, um, uh, you are creating a platform for farmers uh, using software skills. Uh, media. So, in terms of, there are a lot of skills that can be used. Um, innovative ideas, small, small innovative ideas. Um, and in Bihar, I see a lot of innovations happening now there. So, uh, we can list down. I have a lot of projects um, there uh, in in health, in agriculture, in water. Um, also, a lot of things in creating awareness because, as I said, the power of democracy is in creating awareness. Of in awareness among people. Now we have taken a project, uh, one new project. In three months, we are creating a 3,000 youth leaders in Buldana district. So there will be a boy and girl from each village. Uh, they will come up with the plan for the district, vision document for the district. They will create a, uh, so it is like a people participatory. Uh, we will we'll train them emotionally, physically, spiritually. Uh, we will make them totally sound. Then we will Krishi Vikas, Gram Vikas, Vekti Vikas. Like it's like agriculture development, um, individual development, rural development, uh, government schemes. Uh, we are going to train to them because a lot of like uh, there are a lot of government schemes also, um, a lot of government policies, but they don't do not reach to people. So uh, uh, creating a leaders who can do that. So uh, also like you can um, you can sponsor the uh, projects those youth are doing or the program itself. Um, so there are a uh, lot of things I would also recommend, like maybe uh, your skills, uh, if there is a, um, uh, on website, uh, you can put your, like, your skill sets um, and we can maybe match up more people uh, with the similar skills, uh, create a teams. Um, so there are so many things uh, to do and each and every, each and every help uh, counts. Uh, it's, it's all like our, it is not individual, but it is teamwork. And I really appreciate this, uh, this great teamwork, this great event by Overseas Volunteer for Better India team. This is first, uh, I think, first Google Hangout event for the Overseas Volunteer for Better India. And for me also, this was my first time on Google Hangout. So uh, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity. Um, and again, I, I, I strongly believe uh, that uh, in spite of a lot of problems, a lot of current situation uh, in India, um, like uh, internally, externally, like with the uh, external, let's say with China, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, internally with nationalism, corruption, um, addiction, um, like in, in villages, sanitation problem is there. Uh, the, like to give an idea, in a village of 10,000, uh, there will be 6,000 cell phones, but hardly 100 toilets. Um, after like so many years of uh, independence, so but uh, there are a lot of uh, such problems. But um, uh, in spite of that, I see that hope um, in youth and people like you uh, uh, who who like uh, who want to take time out. Um, and uh, I, I again strongly appeal that uh, uh, you have taken this first step. Together, we, we definitely can bring the change. Democracy is still alive. Um, 
uh, we have lots of examples lot of leaders are being created um, so uh, thank you very much and if there are like any more questions if time permits i would like i, I would love to uh, take it or you can always contact me on my email or um, through uh, overseas volunteer for better india team uh, we all will be in touch uh please do uh, share your skills and how uh, in which uh, take up any project take up any single project you can uh, help fundraising or you can help uh, spreading the word creating more awareness giving more ideas your skills uh, your willingness to do something your your monetary help like it is all welcome and uh, thank you very much i hope this was a useful session uh, if there are more things uh, let me know thank you so much bala this was a very inspiring um, a very inspiring address um, you know we really look forward to uh, working very closely with you uh, you know just for the viewers i just want to let you know that uh, we have put up some initial projects on our uh, overseas volunteer for a better india websites Uh, that's obfabi.org uh, where you could contribute for bala's uh, projects we will be updating that with uh, a lot more information in the coming days also we want to let you know that uh, uh, the overseas volunteer for a better india would be launching several launch events in the us uh, around in around august around the independence day we are really encourage all of you to come be part of that Uh, there'll be several fundraising events to support projects like balas and you know of several other leaders uh, with the overseas volunteer for better india uh, we request that you please sign up on our website uh, and uh, come join us and volunteer with us for building a better india thank you so much and 550 people are doing this um and just to just to kind of let you know right now we have over 550 people who are on this google hangout So Great. thank you so much Bala for um, sharing this message with us and inspiring all of us. Thank you.